I know. What is this? I take a year and a half off the game, and then I stream it two streams in a row. Granted, it's been, you know, five, six days, but still. Well, I counted. I counted levels, and uh, I'm only halfway done with this. I have uh, 19 Platinum Relics, and I have 19 levels left to go, so... Uh, in the words of my hero, Sonic the Hedgehog, I got to, uh... Yeah, step it up! So I'm going to, uh... I'm going to really try to take a bite out of this today. I already sound thrilled to be doing this. Let's see. Uh, oh, we're actually going to start with our first Cortex level. So that will be... I've never done uh, time trials for a Cortex level before. I actually don't mind this. I, uh... So it's been four or five days since the last stream of this, and I did get the three Platinums that uh, we failed to get on the previous stream. So I have enjoyed picking the game up again. Uh, since we finished Twilight Princess, I'm finally watching uh, Vinny's stream of it, which I was putting off because I didn't want to be spoiled. And, uh, actually a little bit zelda out at the moment. So it's nice to have something else on the roster. Hello, Darian. I kind of... Also, I'm a free man. I'm no longer a bus driver. Yesterday was my last day. And, uh, didn't really have any plans today. Jack is, uh, working, so he'll be free to stream tomorrow. The bandicoots are en route. I must reach the spot. <laughs> the spot. Alright. Well, we'll scope out the level. It's gonna be a lot of dashing. Oh, that's right, he can't jump on enemies, can he? Recently got the insanely perfect relic on bears repeating. They had to patch the level to make the bear riding segment easier. I do remember the ride levels being a pain in the ass because, uh... You only get one chance at the rides, and the levels only become that, like, halfway through. Okay, see, I'm still in crash mode. I keep thinking that I can jump on the enemies. Why am I even... I don't need to... I don't need to hit that guy. Sorry, I'm still I'm still kind of in, like, stream start mode. I'm trying to say all that I had to say, and then the level comes in, and I can't really do anything but focus. That guy I don't need to worry about. That guy I do need. I need to bounce from him. So I can skip the first two, but I need the third one. I kind of figured today I'd like really buckle down and do like a six hour crash stream. But, uh, that didn't... I don't think that's gonna quite happen. I did, like, laundry took a lot longer than I anticipated. So, uh... I'm shorter on time than I had had expected to be. But, uh, it's still gonna be longer than the previous stream. I wanna, I wanna like, sit down and start getting some of this game done. I think we're on, like, what, stream 12, 13? Let's see if there's anything down here. No, there's not. Okay. It's been so long since I played this level, I now just have to relearn the routing. Because this branches a lot more than the, uh... The Bandicoot levels are just kind of straight gauntlets. They don't, they don't really do branches in this game like they did in previous Crash games. It was probably for the best. I think most people didn't really like the like branching levels in Crash. Not not completing them anyway. Okay, so I 
this guy. Get these two crates. I can just dash through them. Oh, no. Okay. So either I need to hit that or I would need to bounce on top of the crates if that's possible. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just worried. I, I, try, I now have a lot of free time since it's now summer break, but uh, I'm a little worried about burning myself out because I got this today. We're going to hopefully finish the Zelda randomizer tomorrow. And then starting on Monday, I am planning to start the Skyward Sword Marathon, which could be like six hours a day for five days. And even then, I don't think I'm going to get through that game. Twilight Princess took us about 35 hours, and I am told that Skyward Sword is longer, so... question is it is it worth coming down here or would it be better to just bounce on that guy up there okay I can yeah I can bounce on top of these that's probably faster than hitting the switch I like the dashing part of cortex his gameplay The turning enemies into bouncy platforms is a little, a little, a little goofy. I get it. I, I get why it's like a gameplay mechanic because it's unique. It makes him play very differently from the other characters. It just like lore-wise, it's a very strange and random ability for him to have. Why did it wrong button? Okay, let's see how this goes. I turn this guy. Uh, that gets me up here faster, but I don't know if it's... Because I don't have a good way to get up this. How would I get up this? I'd have to jump down. I don't know if that's faster than dashing along the bottom. The uh, Dingo Dial levels were actually, like, way easier than that last level. The one that was mixed Crash... No, the last level was pure Crash and Coco. Those levels suck because of the, uh, the spinning mechanic. The spin timing thing that they have in this game now. I know this hurts to watch. Once I get all of the stuff that I have to, like, say at the start of the stream out, I'll, I'll do better. Which is now. Why, why did I jump on that? I didn't need to jump on that. That's a little bit of a time sink, that, uh, that platform guy. Miss the bounce. coffee just before I started the stream, but uh, I forgot to set the Keurig machine to ice. So instead, I have a cup of uh, watery, lukewarm coffee. Tremendous way to start the stream. Okay, there we go. There's That seems like our route. The other characters like Cortex, Dingadile, and uh, Tana... It's just kind of like uh, it's it's very it's very similar to Crash One. You just kind of have to do the the things precisely because they have fewer actions to worry about than Crash and Coco do. I need that. I need that two crate. Oh, 
No, jump. Jump, Mario, jump! <sighs> nope. Do over. Mulligan. Of all the bonus fail characters, my favorite is Dingadile. I think so, too. He's slower than the Bandicoots, but not by so much that it's an annoying. And despite being slow, he still feels like fluid to play. The block stuff kind of breaks up Cortex, and uh, Tana feels the slowest out of all of them. She feels a little like playing Coco in uh, Wrath of Cortex, and that's not good. Especially her, uh, her, like, circle kick, which you basically never want to use. The grabbing and throwing stuff does kind of slow down Dingadial a little bit, his gameplay. But that's alright, because you can... In time trials, there's usually ways to avoid that. The previous levels I did, you had to do it for uh, the... The big mixers you have to destroy. Dingadile acting in the role of Twitch and destroying mixers. Whoops. Ah. Oh, this section's gonna suck, isn't it? The Nitros. If only I had the walk across Nitro's ability. I didn't do all relics when I... No, I did do the relics when I played Wrath of Cortex. I'm in the middle of making highlights for that, too. I'm in the middle of a lot of highlights videos. I'm, I'm very behind. I tend to prioritize other projects, so I'm down to uh, once every two weeks. The channel doesn't get a ton of views. I still like making them, though. Got the, the remaining half of the Sonic Shuffle highlights out today. I'm considering... Now that we have a Dreamcast emulation, if I should, uh... No! Oh, that was a belly flop. That was a ground pound. I'm considering playing through Sonic Shuffle on my own off-stream. So I can unlock all the characters and we could do, like, a multiplayer stream of it. Because surely that would be at least better. I know Sandy always wanted to do a multiplayer Sonic Shuffle stream. I kind of let him down in that regard. All we did was invite him over so we could do a level of the uh, single player and complain about it the whole time. I don't know how interested Saucy would be in that. I know she's a, she's a Sonic fan, but is she a willing to put up with Sonic Shuffle Sonic fan? Heroes to uh, compile Shadow the Hedgehog, the one stream we did of that. I'm way behind on the Sonic series, but I do want to get through it and, like, caught up because uh, the Sonic 06 streams were pretty good. I've never played Sonic Shuffle. Yeah, you and most people. It was, uh, not a good game, as they say. Well, the single player was awful. Because of the horrible, horrible cheating AI. I'm willing to bet the multiplayer wasn't that bad. It was just, it, it was just kind of a watered-down Mario Party, I imagine. His mini-games aren't great, but they're not, like, offensively bad either. You also don't end up playing a lot of them because it's not like you're not guaranteed to do one every turn like you are in Mario Party. I never tried 100% uh, orange juice. That was like the uh, 
That was a Mario Party replacement that was popular for a little while. Like a Mario Party on Steam, but anime. Okay, I don't even need, need to dash for that one. 24 seconds. These parts, you really got to uh, end the uh, end the slowdown as soon as you can get away with it, because that'll uh, like preload the next batch of uh, falling blocks. I don't feel like I'm doing great. Then again, I don't see like. Uh, don't see the ghost. Okay, invincibility. Oops, that might have been too low. No, I'm good. Fortunately, I practiced at this part because I did this so many times over trying to get the, the platinum on the previous level. I hope none of those are uh, things I need to activate. Okay, invincibility again. I'm not doing a whole lot of spinning in this one. That's fine, hopefully. I don't know how anal I have to be yet. Okay, spin. Spin to win. Spin to the end. 119. Gold. Okay. I need another uh, nine seconds off for platinum. I consider, I consider doing like a huge 12-hour stream to finish this off. But, uh... In order to do that, I would have to ensure that every th every one I got was platinum, and that could take a bit take that could make it take way longer. You don't like the uh, you don't like the second half of those timeline levels where you go back to the original. I think it's fine because it's a remixed version. I it's a it's a harder version of the level. It's not exactly the same level again crates and obstacles and things are placed differently. But I get how you, you could, like, call it lazy. Alright, what's this one? Pretty sure it's fine. It's the same as the last stream, but the uh, levels are all good, right? I am but a little bit louder than the game. Wait, where'd her... She lost her underwear in the intro somehow. Where's the clock at? Oh, it's deep in this one. It'd be a real dick move for those two crates to be uh, time crates. Okay, good. That's such a brutal death animation. I missed. One more time. But uh, Bruce the shark. Nope. Wait, I need those. Okay. Uh, do I need to wait for these? Uh, second one. First one I can probably get away with just jumping across. Oh no, which way do I go? Aw, oh, man, I gotta guess! Okay. That has two... That has a few crates and the... It has one mask and a few time crates. 
already not confident in this run, so I'm going to go back and uh, check what the other one is. What is that? Is it like a difficulty notation? Is it the right one's harder? This has one time crate. Oh, that's way shorter, though. Uh, I don't think it's worth that detour just for, like, one mask and an extra three seconds. Oh, no, not th I hated this part. How do I go? A uh, circle to go under, I think. Oh, it's been so long since I did this level. I had like a such a good first attempt too, and then they throw that that split at me. Right after I said, "Oh, this game doesn't do splits." way that right path would be worth it is if there's a uh, a third mask later in the level and there's like a really good reason to uh, want the invincibility. Nope! Uh, okay. Somehow I got away with that. Missed some crates. This is the place that I would get invincibility if I took the hard route. all these guys, but they're not particularly difficult. Oops! Okay, we're fine. We're good. Doesn't matter. I shouldn't have gone up here. There's nothing up here. Why did I come up here? I just ruined that run. Level's not too, too long, at least. Maybe that was gold. Gold can be pretty forgiving. Yeah, that was already gold, okay. That's quite a big difference for platinum. But uh, I made a lot of mistakes, so I could, uh, I can improve that. Either I would have to go the hard route and get the uh, mask, or I would, I, I would have to, like, I think it's faster to play perfectly through the drones. And then you would get the, uh... Well, even the other... The other invincibility location doesn't seem that important. Because it's right before that section of, uh... Running across the ice slows. And that's just instant death if you fall in anyway. Okay, here we go. First bear level. I guess I can see the, the sapphire times. I'm not just not even looking before I start the level. I will have to at least get the very last level Platinum on stream. But there's no, going to be no avoiding that, and I think the hardest one is the Cortex version of the final level. Just always got to check. Nope, okay. They weren't soulless. Why can't I jump into this water? Why is this safety water? Let me die! <laughs> That's a weird voice for the, like, scientist dudes to have. They sound like a, like a slightly higher-pitched Spongebob, or slightly lower-pitched.
You know what they sound like? They sound like Minecraft villagers. I guess that's a fitting voice for them. That makes this sense enough. What? Nope. Okay, down I go. This music sounds vaguely similar to the bonus levels from Crash 2. I can hear it. It's the it's the slap bass. Crash 2 loved its slap bass. Those are like the motif instruments in the Crash games. I'm trying to think, what was like the main instrument in uh, Xylophone was Crash 1. Crash 2 is all about the slap bass. I don't remember Crash 3 soundtrack well enough to, to say. It was a lot more like electronic than the others. It was also like across all the different like time periods though. How am I gonna get this? I can only like safely do the. I have to be moving slow to safely do the spin. They really, they really need those. All right. So I got to bounce on that. If I maintain momentum, I might be able to just bounce totally across that. The Dingadile level, one of the Dingadile levels, the one with the boat is actually kind of fun because uh, you can circumvent most of the boat part by just doing fancy bounces over all the, the, the crates. The little, the little crates on the sides. Just miss every platform. They sound like the annoying rich kid archetype. Like the little weasel kid, the little snake kid from Doraemon should have that voice. No one's gonna know what that is because I'm the only one who's watched Doraemon, but... I don't talk about that show much on stream. I ended up liking it a lot. The dub was pretty bad of the new one. It, uh, it was like a very Japanese show sit from the 60s set well 70s got a, a new series and they attempted to dub some episodes they attempted to localize some episodes of the new series on I think Disney XD and it was, like, the most recent example of extreme Americanization in anime. I thought that shit was done. No, Doraemon was still doing it in, like, 2018 or something. I think we mentioned we watched the uh, 3D Stand By Me movie as a group. And that, that was just bad. That was a bad movie. I jumped too early! What exactly is that show about? Dora so, the plot of Doraemon is that this Japanese kid is such an incredible loser that uh, his descendants in the future send a robot cat back in time to help him not be such a loser. To turn his life around and therefore, like, change history and make their family in the future better. Which begs the question of how they could afford this amazing, like, magical robot cat, but that aside, it's just a premise for, like, the, the kid and his friends to have adventures with all these crazy future gadgets. And it is very creative in that way. It's a show with a lot- it's a show- originally manga, with a lot of, like, very creative ideas. A lot of very fun, kind of Studio Ghibli-style art to it. The other really old Japanese series that I've been meaning to, uh, 
that I've been meaning to check out that I haven't gotten around to yet is uh, Gegege no Kitaro. Which, as I understand, is like a little kind of nerdy occult kid who is able to, like, see yokai. He has, like, adventures with them or something. I don't know. It also looks very uh, interesting and creative. Cyborg 009 is a pretty old series that I like a lot. However, the version I watched was the one on Toonami, which is the 2001 remake anime. That series exists in, like, uh, it has, like, five versions, I think. There's been a lot of Cyborg 009s. A lot of this, like, uh, 60s, 70s anime strikes a really good balance between uh, Western animation and anime. Where it kind of has a little more of that detail of anime, but also has the, like, creative character designs of Western cartoons. It was before anime got really homogenized into everyone having, like, the same big eyes, the same sharp chins, etc., etc., no noses. There's still some variation in, like, anime styles, but it's it's become a lot rarer. A thing I like to credit uh, Cyborg 009's character design with is that uh, if you turn all of the characters sideways, they all have extremely different, like, facial profiles. Which is not really the case for, like, anime anymore. You know what they had? They all had different noses in Cyborg. Nowadays, anime characters don't even have noses. What's up with that? My hero gets a little bit creative with the character designs. I appreciate that about the show. Some of the character designs I see in, like, Naruto are, like, uh, so out there that as someone who didn't watch all of Naruto, I am, end up very confused about, like, how does this character function? How is this a character that exists? Like, uh, Darian. Who's the dude who has, like, a bunch of masks attached to his back? Is that, like, a transformation? Or is that dude always like that? Does he go to bed at night with the masks there? How does that work? That's gotta be uncomfortable. Kakuzu. Kakuzu. Cox. <laughs> I, sh I ship him with the, the Final Fantasy character. Cox and Butts. <laughs> They're my favorite ship. He's immortal, and his immortality is tied to the masks. Okay, so does he sleep? Does he not need to, like, go to bed and lay on the masks? I'm, I'm really... I'm, I'm stuck on this bed thing. That's kind of a big thing for me. Anytime a character has a really outlandish design, I have to picture how they, like, go to bed. It's my problem with a lot of, like, Tuhu... Toho care. I'm sorry, I say Tuhu unironically now. It's my problem with a lot of, like, Toho characters and other, like, Japanese properties with extremely busy designs. People with, like, giant wings. People with weird head attachments. How do they sleep? How do they put their head on a pillow? That doesn't make sense. Y'all gotta think about this. I don't like this section. The spinning platform section. Okay, invincibility. That's good.
Unfortunately, these levels rarely require invincibility in the same way that uh, Crash 1 time trials do. Mostly because there weren't, like, any other mechanics in Crash 1. So that was, like, the only way to, like, get a really good time. A really good time was invincibility. These guys sound like they should be, like, Invader Zim side characters. That's the type of voice it is. Actually, Crash in general kind of has a similar sort of uh, tone to Invader Zim. I could, I could picture Cortex being at home in the Invader Zim universe. Like the section. Somehow I didn't lose my mask from that. Oh boy, what's this? I don't remember this. Okay, we got slow down mask. Great. I'm going blind now. I don't like that. Uh. Cortex looks like an Invader Zim design. Yeah, he does. A little bit. They're from a similar era. Late 90s, early 2000s. You know who Cortex wouldn't get along with? Bowser from the Mario Brothers movie. They kind of got like the opposite, uh, opposite evil schemes going on. You got the Evolvo Ray and the, the Devolution machine. Which movie has the higher <laughs> Rotten Tomatoes? So prob probably the new Mario movie. Even amidst all of the uh, all the critical complaints about it, it probably still has a higher Rotten Tomatoes score than, than the first movie, right? I'm not going to completely shit on the first Mario Brothers movie. Uh, it was obviously very different from the whatever lore you want to say the games had. It didn't really have any, but... Uh, in terms of stuff like set design, it was actually a very well-made movie, if nothing else. I guess that that's kind of similar to the, Mario, the new Mario movie, actually. Never mind. Got production values and not a whole lot else. <sighs> I can make that. 58 to 29. Okay. what the uh, Sonic anime movie has on Rotten Tomatoes. What a Mario anime movie. Not that a lot more people have seen the Sonic one, I imagine. A lot of people never, like, knew the Mario one existed. Probably still don't. There was like a 19... 80s Mario OVA that was very Japanese. Took a lot of liberties as well. And then there was like a, the 90s Sonic OVA is what I'm talking about. With the uh, weird cat girl princess and knuckles and a cowboy hat. Okay, I can make that. 
No, that's not where I want to go. That's a dead end. I need to go up to the right. All right. Noted. Sorry, up to the left. I hate when a run ends because I don't know which... I don't remember which way the level's supposed to go. Not because I, like, fuck something up mechanically. Because now i got to spend all this time getting back there just to learn the path. Should probably just bounce on those. If I'd bounce on one of the TNTs instead of doing that spinning. I always think I can get them in one go, and I never do. This part's not really causing me grief anymore. Alright, got invincibility. Nice, but not necessary. How's this work? Am I just wearing a mask on top of another mask? <laughs> I had that. I could have one cycled that, and I didn't. Okay. That would be a good spot for the invincibility. Yeah, there's another. Oh, that's right. I forgot this was a mechanic. Right, we're making progress. They do give you a lot of masks on this level. Guess I appreciate that. don't think I can make that in a single jump. This one's fine. Usually. It's usually fine. Oh. Okay, there goes one mask. To make sure this blows up everything. Okay, it does. Just so I don't waste uh, future runs. thought about how I would do a Crash Bandicoot movie. I think if I were to do it, it'd be mostly based off the plot of just Crash 1. Coco would be in the lab. We probably wouldn't need Tana. We don't, we don't need Crash 1 Tana. go with the uh, original like the ditched idea for Aku Aku where he was like the only smart member of the, of the natives on the island and he was just like the local witch doctor the shaman whatever and uh, he would have the power to revive crash which would that, that that would be that would be Crash's superpowers to come back to life. That that's kind of the only way you can fit in a lot of the a lot of the slapstick of Crash Bandicoot. I feel the, the goofy deaths are kind of like the soul of the of the of the games. The soul of the comedy in a lot of ways. I remember someone tried to make a uh, Smash Brothers move set for Bubsy. 
that revolved completely around his death animations. Where was, where was the third one? It's coming up. Here it is. I always have to stop at this part. I wonder if there's a way that I can line that up better. Failed to one cycle that. That's not good. Oh, elevator. Oh, that's right. This is the bear level. We still got the bear part to do. Oh, that's going to be like all memorization. And it's going to be at the end of the level. Man. I gotta dash the whole time. <laughs> and everywhere's an instant death! Oh! I love the bear levels, but they need to be self-contained. You can't just throw a bear section at me at the end of the level. Rapid Cortex get, get, did that better. They got the gimmick part of the level at the start, and then the platforming at the end. I don't think I mentioned this on the previous stream. Uh, so between now and the... Not the last time, but the time before that... The uh, original voice actor for Crash and most of the Crash 1 characters died. What was his name, Darian? I think he voiced Crash for the entire original trilogy. Maybe it was he voiced Embryo. I don't remember. I wonder if that's worth a mask to not have to slow down. Brendan O'Brien, that was the guy. Invincibility, that's fine. What is this one's path? It's going in like a circle. Man. 
I did it once. I know I can one cycle that, but I got to. Uh, I need to be able to reverse momentum. I need to get the momentum on that bounce box just right. One. No, go down. Sorry, I'm now in focus mode. Ooh. This level still isn't nearly as bad as, as the previous ice level. That one was just, that one took me forever. Okay, finally got the one cycle. Okay, elevator up. Just gotta wait. There we go. <sighs> These trees are in such rude spots. That, they, they gotta be TNT there, really? I don't like this. I don't like this! <sighs> There's so many time crates I gotta worry about. Maybe running's not worth it. Getting all of the crates is more important than running in the polar bear section, I think. I'm sure for, like, the dev time, I'll have to do both. I probably won't for... I definitely won't for gold. I probably won't even for platinum. It's gonna come down to more getting a good run on this section. And just getting all the time crates on the polar bear section. I don't think I've gotten, like, anywhere close to any of the dev times. Why did... <sighs> I was just slightly too low pressing the button. Too slow, rather. that mask. Maybe that's worth it. You know what? That is probably faster than, uh, than doing the slowdown. And the masks don't help me for this polar bear part because everything's a one-hit kill anyway. I think I should just tank those nitros. Alright, here we go. There's a couple spots I can get away with running. Most of the time, the box is going to be more important. <sighs> okay, the mask helps for the nitros, like there. Nah, yeah, uh, noises. I need those. <laughs> I didn't realize until recently the. Uh, the creepy Sonic CD uh, music select music was actually the boss music in the game. Like, that plays when you fight Eggman. Wicker streamed uh, Sonic CD recently. It's been, just been a while since I'd seen the game, I guess. Alright. 
one crate. Didn't need that anyway. Okay, get up. Ugh, 145. Gotta be gold. That's gold. Over 15 seconds off. Ugh. Alright, so some of that is gonna be doing the first part. I, I think I missed... I didn't one-cycle the platforms on that run. The other part's just gonna be getting more of the crates on the polar bear. Ah, I'm not looking forward to that. It's because of shit like that that I'm, I'm gonna have to, like, get through the level to the polar bear part to try it over and over again. That I'm doing the platinum parts off-stream. Otherwise, we'd just be here forever. Alright. Tauna level. How many is this? Is this level number four? We're under an hour so far. This is going way faster than the previous stream did. Most of the times the platinums don't seem don't don't end up being as bad as they seem. Like these levels are so long that the you can make up a lot of time difference. Ooh. Easier than it seems. Must have left my jacket in the Bermuda quadrangle. <laughs> All right. Uh That's right. She does the she does the grappling. Except she can't like grapple to things. Except designated grapple things. I'm just gonna scope out the level this first time. This kick feels like so much slower than the spinning or even Dingadile's attack. Okay, wall jumping. Just remembering Tana once again. I can grapple that to blow it up! At least I don't have to worry about running. That actually, this running isn't a mechanic in this. I don't have to worry about doing the stupid spin thing. I get it. I get why it's a mechanic in this. It is more like involved and skillful than either simply running or doing even slide jumping over and over again. I don't care. I still don't like it. If she gets invincibility. Does Tana ever get invincible? I don't remember if she gets to wear the mask or not. I wonder if that's like, uh... Like only Crash and Coco can do that. It's like a familial bond thing. You, have to, you must be this close with Aku Aku. I would say it's kind of weird having, like, this human-sized band bandicoot running around with, like, much more realistic, less cartoony animations than Crash and Coco. But I guess that was always the thing with Tana, is that she was a strangely human-sized bandicoot. That's kind of what made her weird originally.
even Pinstripe just kind of carried himself in a cartoonier manner than, uh... Like, it, Pinstripe doesn't seem like a guy who would have normal humanoid animations. He's got kind of like that Mortimer Mouse thing going on. Cortex made some uh, specific modifications with Tana. Wait, hold on. No, was, was that supposed to... See, that's the confusing part of, like, the Crash 1 intro movie. Was that to imply that Tana had not been put through the Evolve Array yet? Because it opens with, like, the line, Prepare the female bandicoot. But, like, surely she must have if she looked like that. Almost like Crash is not a uh, terribly lore-intensive, uh, story-driven series. I do think there are just a number of things from Crash 1 that are kind of worth being retconned. And some have been retconned a little bit. N namely Coco existing. Coco just didn't exist in Crash 1. That I couldn't see if that was a time crate up there. I don't think it was. I don't think I need to worry about that one. That is such... I don't know how to do that without setting off the, the nitro. Maybe I should just bounce on it. Maybe that's the just the safer option. I'll just bounce on that. Come to think of it. Yeah. You lose momentum doing the spin with her. You don't quite lose momentum spinning with uh, Dingadile or... Uh, well, you lose a lot less momentum spinning with Dingadile. And the other Bandicoots, for that matter. It, just, it doesn't seem necessary for her to, like, slow down so much. Someone in chat saying there was like rumors of a Crash 5 or something last stream. I wonder what that was about. There's just rumors, granted, but. Alright, that's a good cycle, that's a good way to do it. Drones? Eh. Okay, now we're on to Coco. We got the mask, which is nice. I'm gonna slow down these, because... I don't know if I'll need the mask or not. I was wrong. It does come in handy for the uh, polar bear. And for blowing yourself up on TNT. It's also good for that. Oh, God. That, oh, that, this means there are two levels with polar bear endings. Oh, no! I turn into Sonic when I'm particularly appalled. That's no good! But cases like... A, a lot of these cases where I'm sliding, I don't have to worry about the running, at least, but...
Stop laughing. He's so proud of himself. He's just having fun. He likes to snowboard. Uh, with all those, I'll be mad if I die here. End! Level be over! Thank you. Okay, get up. <clears throat> 121. Alright, gold. Even <laughs> 17 more seconds off. We're just getting farther and farther from those platinums. Well, this will give me a lot to do between streams, at least. They need a Spyro 4 before that. It'd be nice. Yeah. I think that was, like, uh, Activision. That was around... Uh, around the time Spyro 4 could have happened is the time that Activision decided to go all in just piling all of their studios on Call of Duty. Because that's the same time that Tony Hawk uh, 3 and 4 was canned. In other news, there is uh, current news of Microsoft attempting to buy out Activision in what is the biggest video game acquisition deal in history to date in terms of price. Several billion. And you know, I get it. Monopoly's bad. Companies just buying out all these other companies sucks. I would care more if it wasn't Activision. Activision kind of sucks. I think I would be happier if Microsoft owned all of the Activision properties. But, uh... Darian saying that didn't go through. Yeah, it was, uh, it was challenged in courts by uh, antitrust. Is that why it stopped, or did they just... Was it was like a financial reason? Hello, Hecklejack. Now, I've already gone through four or five levels in this stream, so we're making way faster time than uh, the previous stream. My thumbs are so far fine. I do have the issue of because this is a game where you're holding forward constantly. My thumb, like, slides off the analog stick a lot. I can't believe the ghost of Crash would just watch that happen to his sister. I'm gonna have to time this for when this is, like, just done. That seems to be the starting point. Alright, jump rope. Here we go. Alright, vines. I can do vines. Vines are usually not too bad. It's just kind of memorization. The, the worst vine section was the one with the... the slowdown doors. That was really hard to get down for some reason. I keep missing those that time creep behind the, uh, plant. I like how the main complaint for Wrath of Cortex was that it, it, it copied Crash 3 too closely. And then we get this game, and it's just about time travel again, just like Crash 3. 
So both Crash 4s are just kind of Crash 3, but again. In one way or another. I don't remember if Vinny ever played this Crash 4. He played the re the uh, trilogy remakes a little bit. He's not he's not a big Crash fan. Jack is not a big Crash fan. This is a more divisive series than I was aware. When I was a kid, I just kind of saw it as, like, Mario or Sonic. This is just games that anyone could pick up and enjoy. Not so, apparently. A lot of people just, like, don't jive with Crash platforming. And it's not like a console war thing. They just don't like the way it controls or it's too hard or whatever. More people I've seen seem to be willing to, uh jump on the Spyro train more readily. Which is itself weird, because Spyro was the less popular of the two series. Although I still blame Japan for a lot of that. Not Japan specifically, but whoever... I wonder who was behind the decisions to fuck up Spyro in Japan. So I've talked about on this, this on stream before. Uh, Spyro is much less popular in Japan than Crash Bandicoot. Because, for some reason, I don't know who made this decision, it was decided to fuck up Spyro in transit. They made a lot of, like, really horrible changes to Spyro 1 on the PS1. For the Japanese version of the game. Chief among them, like, happy, having his walking speed for no reason. Oh, I was out of masks. Yeah, they just made him way slower for no reason, and his, like, charge speed in Japan is similar to his walking speed internationally. They filled the game with, uh... Sparks gives, like, a bunch of hints because I, I guess they thought Japanese players would need text hints for some reason to figure out what was going on. As opposed to the dragons who already have text telling you what to do. I think they fucked up the camera so you don't have control over it or something like that. It's always, it's locked behind you. I'd have to go over the exact details. His personality was changed in Japanese. I don't. I don't know details about that. I haven't heard that. I'm curious if, if that's the case, how it was changed. Now, it, his personality wasn't particularly likable in the Spyro One, anyway. But that was itself updated for Spyro Two, which uh, I think I don't. I don't think. Okay, Spyro 2 got released in Japan, but did very poorly. Like, the damage was already done to the franchise. And Spyro 3 didn't even get... ...ported. Like, Spyro 3 did not get a Japanese release. It, the series just did that badly. Wow, that timing was awful. Uh, wonder why Crash is so divisive. Wonder if it's because of the reputation with a difficult platformer. I, maybe. I hear this from people who, like, are my age, though. People who, like, were around for early Crash. Not people who are trying the games for the first time in, like, 2020.
I guess maybe that's not a good metric, because they were, like, objectively popular. They sold well. Granted, it wasn't really... There wasn't a ton of competition in those days. Like, whatever console you had, you bought the mascot platformer that was on that console. If you owned a PlayStation, you probably got Crash. It's not like today where everything is on every platform and you just... The games themselves are competing more directly with each other. Exclusivity kind of just vanished over time. It still exists, but not nearly to the degree that it did in the, uh, in the days of, like, the console wars. Up until, like, the PS2 era, everything was exclusive. Just about. <laughs> I like the idea that the only reason that uh, Crash had so many players was because it was, back in my day, this was all we had. This was our PlayStation 1 games. We got the PS1 for Christmas and we didn't know better. We just had to play Crash. Okay, invincibility. That is good to have. I think. What's coming up? Can I get to the vines in time? Ooh, this is a great spot to have invincibility. Ooh, yeah. Give me that cheese. Oh, that was perfect. I need invincibility there. That is not going to be optional. Okay. This is good. This is a good run. What did I... Ju I just... I just I completely whiffed an easy jump. Mad. Mad at myself. Where the 2000s era crash really killed the franchise that badly? I don't think so. I think most people, like, aren't even aware of Crash in the PS2 era. Uh, obviously, people who are familiar with the series, but people outside the fan base are just like, there were Crash PS2 games? Probably know about, like, Twin Sanity, but outside that... That was just kind of a silent era for uh, the PS1 characters. Crash and Spyro both had a rough time on the PS2. I thought I had the timing for one to start. Maybe I don't. Three platformers practically died in the mid-2000s. I don't know if they died. They still had some mixed success. There were PS2 era ones. Probably, you know, Ratchet, Jack, and uh, Sly Cooper. Obviously. They were not as dominant as they had been in the past. Like, in the PS1 era, era and prior, that was like... That was video games. Was mascot platformers. From the P in the PS2 era, they kind of... I think they performed about on par with other genres of games. Things like shooters and racing games were catching up. Sports games. And then PS3, yeah, they, yeah, was, they were dead. The late... The late noughties is dead is when they were well and truly gone. FPS game were all the, were all the rage. Yeah, they definitely had a fan base. I don't think it really kicked off until like late Xbox. Halo was huge. Halo kind of not launched the genre, but really popularized it on consoles. FPS was kind of a uh, it was a slow burn on consoles. PC had, like, had, had... PC always had them. They had Doom and Quake and everything. Consoles kind of started... Weirdly enough, I think... P 
PS4, uh, not PS4, N64 were like the first really successful console shooters with the likes of uh, GoldenEye and Perfect Dark. What were some on PS1? I didn't really follow the PS1 shooter scene. I know they existed. Those like uh, Tom Clancy games on PS1. Early Call of Duty. I don't remember if Duke Nukem got on the PS1. Serious Sam might have. It was kind of a PC name. I saw that. It's uh, another reason I'd kind of rather not have Activision with the license. Because that's like sub Konami. Konami, Konami just like kind of whores out their properties to anyone willing to pay for them. That's how they get a lot of their money outside of Pachinko. At least they made, they put out, like, collections and things. Activision doesn't even do that. They just, like, hoard their properties, don't do anything with them, except stick them in Call of Duty. I still don't know for sure. I don't have any, like, evidence or anything, but, uh... I feel like it would be very in-character... For, uh, for the Smash team to have reached for Crash because he was a very pop, he was a very popular pick worldwide, and uh, it would be very in character for Activision to have just said no. It was a very Activision thing to do. I can't wait for the uh, Tony Hawk Call of Duty pack. I want to shoot skateboards at people. That's coming, right? got to make this jump. This is very important. Okay. Just the one. Oh, I'm blind now. Oh, I'm vining blind. Ah, I missed one. Uh, 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 uh. I don't like this. I don't like this tr multi-track drifting going on. I missed one three crate. That's th that's gold. That's still gold. Fifty seven seconds. Rather they give their franchises to a company that actually cares about them. I mean, yeah, me too. I think Microsoft is the lesser of two evils, is all. But it's hard to get get worse than Activision. Here's the thing: Microsoft let two characters be in Smash. That's all I care. That's my metric. Does this company put their characters in Smash? If so, they're all right. All right, Cortex level. The chronologically first Cortex level. Literally, it's 88 million BC. Before Crash Bandicoot. Uh, so it crashes Jesus. Oh, this is gonna be an all Cortex level. 
I f honestly, I forgot those exist. I'm so used to the uh, the other character levels turning back to the Bandicoots halfway through. I'm still shocked that they did that. I mean, why? Let's see if they're not doing their own like crossover game, like it's, just, it's beneficial to all parties settings. involved. I don't see why anyone say no to being in Smash. Are there rumors of uh, Sony attempting another All Stars Battle Royale? Not a Battle Royale, but another, you know, Smash clone. There's always rumors. I have no idea if those have, like, any truth to them or not. I wonder if I should just be dashing through this entire level. They are rival companies, yes, but like, what do they stand to benefit from their property not being in Smash? How does that benefit them financially? You could argue there's an impact of, well, fewer people buy a Switch because of this, but... It depends on the price they ask, I suppose, to balance that out. Anything being in Smash tends to boost the traffic. Exactly, yeah. It's it's great advertisement. Specifically for Nintendo series. Like, the number of Nintendo series that only exists now because they had a character in Smash. Fire Emblem would not be nearly as popular. No one would have played Xenoblade Chronicles. Earthbound probably owes a lot of its uh, success to Smash. I, I don't know that it was ever commercially successful, but Earthbound has like at least a cult following nowadays. I don't think Smash necessarily uh, translated to F-Zero sales, but eh, at least people are aware of the franchise, kind of, a little bit. What, uh, are there any non-Nintendo series that really benefited financially from being in Smash? Obviously, Minecraft wasn't going to sell any more than it already did. Same for Kingdom Hearts. As a, most of the... Most of the series, the, the third parties that get into Smash are already, like, really huge series. Banjo probably wasn't really affected because there haven't been any Banjo games in 15 years. <laughs> Fatal Fury. Oh yeah, I could see that. A lot of people, a lot of people outside South America didn't know what Fatal Fury was until it was in Smash. Like, who the hell's this guy? Why is Ken wearing a hat? Myself, kind of being one of them. I, I didn't, like, take more of an interest in Fatal Fury after Terry's edition, but... I can see how people who play fighting games would. Could be a similar story with Tekken. Tekken 8, about to come out, right? No. <clears throat> Next big shocker would be Ratchet & Clank. You can say that for any of the PS2 era platforming dudes. I feel like, as far as like Sony platformers go, Crash is like the most historically significant and globally popular. Ratchet is definitely the biggest of the PS2 era, and also probably the one who's, I would say, most relevant today prior to this game and the and the Insane Trilogy. Crash is making a comeback. 
I think in terms of relevance, uh, Crash has probably overtaken Ratchet again. But Ra Ratchet was ahead for a little while with, like, the movie and everything. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. What are we doing? What are we doing now, friends? I don't like this. This is a lot of convoluted shit going on. Convoluted platforming. That's the Cortex way. I need that crate. That crate is important. I need that crate too. Ah, I wasted a bunch of time on that. Oh no, I shouldn't have done bouncy. And I did it again. I shouldn't have done bouncy there either. I'm making this so much harder for myself. Oh no! I just ruined the run! I took it, and I soiled it. Soiled it! You're just talking as like a, a Sony represented a Sony representative that Sony still owns. Okay. What does Sony own? I guess most of the most of the PlayStation exclusives, which isn't a ton, but Ratchet, do they own do they own Jack or Sly? Kratos is the obvious one. I thought it was weird that they considered Kratos, like, their main dude in PS All-Stars. I guess I just, I didn't realize how much of a, uh... How much of an icon he was considered in, like, the PS3 era. At least by them. I don't know by, out by other people. crash in that game. Of course he wasn't going to be in Smash Brothers. Activ Activision wouldn't even play ball with the PlayStation crossover game. Okay, I'm fine. Eh, I'm not fine. There were rumors of a new Sly game? When were the, uh, when were the collections released? Sly had a PS3 collection. I think Jack and Ratchet both had collections on the PS4? And all of these collections run terribly in some way or another, from what I understand. I've heard none of them were particularly amazing. Why, why you got such stubby little legs, Cortex? Why can't you jump? Why are you so white? Cortex, please. Imagine a crash sports game. Oh no! I just realized what's happening. That thing is like, it's melting the box before I get it. I'm not getting that time crate. That sucks. That's such a troll.
don't like how much I have to wait for these bugs. Also, I don't have a double jump. Those are all PS3 collections. Break the crate, Cortex. Eh, waste a mask. He's so bad at jumping. Why does he suck so bad at this? No wonder he hates Crash. Crash can do what he never could. wonder if there's like an easier way to do all this that I'm not uh... there's no way I can get to that before it melts make that without uh, boxing the, the bug. Why didn't that... Why didn't that hit him? I saw it hit him. That was square on the bug. Oh, I'm just glad I don't have a crash section at the end of this. His, his hitboxes are so jank. He gets caught on every little lip. He's so whiny. Oh, I don't know if I can jump up this ledge. It's kind of slippery. Shut the fuck up, Cortex. Get up there! see any way that I can, like, cheese that. Any way I could make this climb other than the way that I'm currently doing it. Can't wait to see the dev time and they just ex abuse some glitch to, like, fly up all the way to the top. I need that. That is not optional. Jump, please. Waste my mask. Okay. Have we have we've made it this far once? Oh, there's vines. I am so lucky I made it through that. Probably wasn't worth going back. But there's more level! End! I don't want to memorize more! <sighs> Man, I, I was having a good run, and now I gotta expend, like... I'm gonna have to start over, because now I have to, like, do all this memorizing new stuff. Where am I going? Down here? Okay. Oh, that was nitros! I didn't see! There were nitros on me! <sighs> I need coffee. I like the flashback tapes. The flashback tapes were a good addition to this game. That's a two crate. I needed that. No. 
take me. End me. Please. Let's see how these prehistoric predators like my blaster's new setting. I don't know if this was confirmed, but, uh, I heard word that Twitter, Twitter, Twitch, is now trying to make it so that, uh, simul streaming, like I'm doing right now to Twitch and YouTube, is against the TOS for all users, not just affiliates. If that is the case, I'm kind of banking that they uh, won't care for a streamer of my size. And if they do, you know what? That seems like a good reason to not use Twitch anymore. Hopefully it doesn't come up. If I'm suddenly not streaming on Twitch anymore, then I will still be on YouTube because, uh, yeah, that that's, that's kind of shitty. seems to be confirmed. Well, we'll see if they enforce it, I suppose. Okay, so he can make it bouncing up that ledge. I think it's because I'm holding towards the ledge. Yeah, he's hitting this little lip here. He's bonking his head on the grass and failing to gain the height. probably asked this question before. If you guys were to have one Crash game remade, what would it be? Pretty sure Darian's gonna say Twin Sanity. I still want a Crash Bash remake. I'm weird like that. I would play the hell out of it. I don't think I've been getting that one, that two crate. I think I've just been walking past it every time. see what they could do with uh, tag team racing, which they already, they, they did their, their crash racing remake. It kind of, it's, it's CTR, Nitro Fueled, but they did, they included stuff from all the racing games, even the mobile ones. That's so kind of just like the overall crash racing game rep. But, uh, maybe this is unpopular. I think tag team racing just seemed like an extremely fundamentally flawed concept. The idea that you can, uh, just, like, tag onto opposing racers at any time. Because there's, like, nothing to disincentivize just, like, piggybacking on a good player until the end of the race and then jumping off at the last second. You think they would butcher the music in a Wrath of Cortex remake? Why do, why do you think that? What's, uh, what's noteworthy about the Wrath of Cortex music? Hit the one box, Cortex. Not only can you not jump, you cannot aim. 
Truly, you are a failure. Uh, I keep eating that particular vine. And that particular flower keeps eating me after I fail to make that particular jump. This is some, uh... I haven't, seen, I haven't seen, like, ledge shenanigans like this since the Crash 3 underwater levels. I complained about them constantly. This is really bad, though. I'm hitting so many ledges that there's just... Because they put these little lips on all of these jungle ledges that he needs to just barely jump up. This isn't even a lip. I don't know why he's not making that. This one, too. He doesn't like that jump. Doesn't like to dash over that. I think I missed the, the two crate again. I feel like I should be dashing more. I just, I don't feel safe doing it in a lot of these places, especially in places like this! Favorite songs were butchered in the remake. Who, uh, who, did, who composed for uh, Wrath of Cortex? It wasn't still uh, Mark Mothersbaugh, was it? I think that was a uh, Traveler's Tales made that game. I don't know who they had for uh, their staff. I wish Cortex could fire faster as well. I'm just going to complain about every aspect of him as a person and make him feel horribly insecure. But uh, I have to, like, wait for a few frames after firing once in order to fire the second blast. Otherwise, it just kind of doesn't register the second one. And that has uh, failed to bounce blockify some enemies by now. Where'd he go? I could have sworn I saw that hit him. Andy Blythe and Martin Justra. Hmm. Yeah, I don't remember any tracks from, from a Wrath of Cortex off the top of my head. I don't remember most Crash Bandicoot tracks off the top of my head, I suppose. Just kind of like the main themes from each game's. Okay, I can make I can make it through that without having to wait with some uh, precision dashing. I'm a very dashing fellow. Aha! Uh -huh. This is just my Ganon voice, but it's Cortex now. Get box, box, box! Can't even die right. They did music for some of the PS1 Disney games. What were some of the PS1 Disney games, aside from Emperor's New Groove? Was there a Hercules PS1 game? I know Bugs Life was an N64 game. Was it also on PS1? Oh, there's a Toy Story. One and two, I think. I think Nick streamed, like, Toy Story 2 recently. I think I just 
I just blinded that uh, that two crate for most of my uh, earlier runs. Hercules game, Toy Story, Bugs Life, Tarzan. I, I, I vaguely remember the Tarzan one. I've never seen footage of it, though. I know it existed. I think Hunchback... Wasn't Hunchback, like, the last movie of, uh... That was, like, the last Disney Renaissance movie. I don't think it was as successful as they wanted. They didn't do as much merchandising for Hunchback. There was no Hunchback video games. There was, like, a PC game or two. It was, like, a minigame collection. We never got to platform as Quasimodo swinging around Paris. <laughs> Left a picture. This is the first Assassin's Creed took place in Paris, didn't it? One of them did. Look at that guy running into Quasimodo, just jumping around rooftops. Hello, best bus driver, Marcus. I was one of you until yesterday. I'm no longer a bus driver. I am moving on to greener pastures. Going to uh, see if I can get by on voiceover and the thing I went to college for, which is script editing. If that doesn't pan out, I'll, I don't know, go to trucking or something. I just bounce on those and not take a hit? That was the wrong button to press. There is a rapper called Bus Driver. How, how do you know about my rap name? Who told you? A little too close. I had the I had the Hunchback CD-ROM game. I had Bugs Life on N64. I had Emperor's New Groove on PS1, and I had the Hunchback game on PC. Those were my Disney games. And before that, I had uh, Lion King and Aladdin on Genesis, but those were like those were premier Genesis games. Everyone who was anyone had those. Not the sissy Super NES Aladdin where you threw apples. He didn't have a sword. That was the lame version. I say version. They were pretty different games. The Super NES and the Genesis Aladdins. I think the different versions of The Lion King were the same game. But they did have substantial differences. In fact, if I remember correctly... One of the versions, maybe it was like an early PC version, was actually uncompletable because they didn't, like, bother to test the whole game. I think it was like the monkey swinging level would bug out and be un impossible to complete. This is really a question that needs answering, but this does beg the question. If Cortex is running around levels and these are here, that implies that he is not the one placing them. Why, why are there explosives all over the Crash Bandicoot world? Specifically the prehistoric Crash Bandicoot world. Ellis grandpa owned uh, Genesis Aladdin. Was he one of the uh, was he one of the Pokemon is satanic folk? Did did he jump on that? My parents didn't, but my my neighbors did. They they were playing shit like uh, Call of Duty and Turok and Perfect Dark, but uh, Pokemon was not allowed in their house because it was it was work of the devil. Of trying to make that jump, that that one just is not going to work.
I want to see footage of someone getting that box. I'm convinced it's just not possible. That's just there to, to like, make you angry. <sighs> Missed that two box, but I got a good cycle on the bug at least. I wonder, statistically, somewhere, there were some parents who must have thought the Castlevania games were evil. Like, though they were the work of the devil, because, uh, they had, like, monsters in it, and Dracula was on the cover. Surely there were children out there who were not allowed to play Castlevania for that reason. Despite it being a game about, you know, hunting the monsters. Itself not particularly Christian, but that's beside the point. I think aside from the Pokemon thing, my uh, my favorite like dumb religious video game moment was uh, oh, I heard about uh, like a, a televangelist got a call from a mom about. Uh, her kid had a Sans keychain, and she was complaining about about the the little skeleton figure, and the 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 evangel evangelist advised her that uh, she she should get her kids to play something more wholesome and less monstrous. In complete opposition to the point of Undertale, that was a good one. That was a good one. Not, not for that kid. I feel sorry for that kid, but... It's just better to blow up those nitros. I, d I don't want to have to worry about them. I don't think there's any way to, like, cancel his little, like, uh, stall animation when he ends the dash, either. You just kind of have to deal with it. Only costs a couple frames, but, you know, precious frames! Okay, I kept my masks. I got, I got to be so careful with these bugs, because sometimes it hits them and it just doesn't show it as, like, hitting them. Okay, I have two masks of insurance. I am doing good. I can afford to take a hit there. Not waiting for those vines. Uh, I got this section again. I forgot about this guy. Hello. No! Oh, you were supposed to be bouncy! Man, I don't know where my second shot went. It just ate it. And I just, I just missed the ledge. What is Diablo about? I, I, I guess it is about killing demons, right? I know basically nothing about the Diablo series. I know there's, like, a cow world. I know that, uh... It, it's, it's popular with PC gamers, I think, right? I know that Ganondorf was in one. That's cool. That That's a selling point. I'm not gonna buy the game, but if I, if I were, that, that'd be the reason. And, uh, I know, don't you people have phones? 
that's it. That's the extent of my knowledge of the of the Diablo franchise. He's so bad at jumping. He skipped leg day. God, I hate this. I've not struggled on other Cortex levels. It's this one specifically has just been awful with the platforming. It's something about this jungle architecture. Stage architecture, whatever you want to call it. Somehow I didn't lose a mask there. Jump up the f ledge! I hate it. I hate that. That is the worst ledge in the game so far. That is the worst bit of level geometry. You know what? That's the worst one in the whole game. I don't care what comes after this. That one's the worst. I'm preemptively calling it. Nothing's going to be worse than that. Why did, why did you suddenly face that way? but it saves a little bit of time. Not a great bug cycle. It sounds like a... Uh, sounds like a fantasy contraption. The bug cycle. It's a bug motorcycle. I, I almost had that in Pokemon. We had a dragon cycle. So what's the deal with uh, Diablo having four entries? Does, does the devil just keep coming back? Is this like a Dracula situation? How can there be, be a Diablo 2 if they, if they beat Diablo? Bugs look kind of like Watto. Might just be because I'm not looking at them closely enough. But to my old blind eyes from a distance, they look like Watto. Hey, it only took me two attempts to get up the ledge that time, and I just died immediately anyway. Okay, so it's a Ganondorf situation. No, no wonder Ganondorf is in that series. And he's basically like Zelda Satan anyway. I, I guess. I don't know. Uh, Skyward Sword coming Monday. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be marathoning it. As long as I can stand every day. This ledge should be the final boss. Actually, it shouldn't. That would be awful. Crash color was determined by what TVs were available at the time. How so? You mean the fact that he's orange? Hey, Annie! I killed a little scientist today! Guns do not work on me, only money. The fact that he's orange. How, how does the fact that he is orange relate to uh, TVs? He needs to stand out from his environment, obviously, but that's kind of just. Uh, that's kind of just color design.
I was about to talk about a different series after the Diablo conversation. Now I can't remember what it was. Well, I'm way ahead of the Sapphire, at least. I think. I can still see him, but that's not a good sign. I hate this box, too. This box just keeps not wanting to get hit for no good reason. Hit. I didn't need to eat that hit. That was a totally pointless, easily avoidable damage. Just walked off. Mentioned Doom. No, it wasn't Doom. I'll remember it, or I won't. Oh well. I wonder if they chose to make uh, Spyro purple so that he would contrast Crash more. I and mean, maybe not. Because Spyro did start later. It, uh, Spyro 1 came out about in tandem with uh, Crash 3. Those two always had like a uh... Naughty Dog and Insomniac also ha always had like a, a playful, friendly rivalry. They also kind of had each other's backs. Like uh, the Crash and Spyro games were always uh, they had demos on each other's discs. I don't remember if uh, the same was true for like uh, Ratchet and Jacks. But they at least had, like, uh, references to one another, even in their, their PS2 era games. Why can't I turn these plants into blocks? Why are only some plants blockifiable? That doesn't make sense. This is the point where I'm out of commentary, now I'm just mad at the level. Specifically the ledges in the level. That That's what keeps getting me. I've said it already. I don't need to say See, that's why I'm, I don't need commentary. I've said everything already. I've made every complaint that I can make against this stupid level and its stupid geometry. And it's stupid troll acid. Kind of just the big two as far as uh, platforming mascots on the PS1 went. There were other attempts, but uh, none of them were as quite as uh, like the ubiquitous as Crash and Spyro. Obvious two that come to mind, and for me, are uh, Gex and Croc. Well, 
there any others that got more than one game? There were a couple similar, uh, like, failed mascots. Or not as big mascots, even on the PS2. Like, uh, Ty, the Tasmanian Tiger. Anyone remember Blinks? That was Xbox. That was Xbox's attempt at a mascot platformer. And that, uh... I don't think that even got two games, did it? Was there ever a Blinks 2? Blinks looked too real. He looked too much like a real cat. It was, it was a little bit uncanny. I don't know how many other people felt that way. It's not like being slightly more realistic looking furries is ever really uh, like a death knell. Wasn't a problem for Star Fox. In fact, some people liked it in Star Fox Adventures. That was the game Crystal appeared in. Waste of a mask. I get, every time he, like, slightly struggles to get up a ledge, I get nervous, like he's not gonna make it. Rightly so. Maybe if I jump from further back? Blinks did have a sequel, okay. I guess technically, I don't know if I'd call him a mascot platformer, but uh, Frogger did get two games on the, on the PlayStation consoles. Because he wasn't, like, a series that, uh, was created for, like, the mascot era. It was an existing game that they, uh, adapted for the PS1. I think successfully. It's kind of a shame that no one really remembers those games. Still got Frogger 2 that, uh, I could stream at some point. Just haven't gone around to it. don't understand how I can get past that. Maybe I just need to... Maybe I just need to block the flower. Maybe the obvious solution was in front of me all along. I don't think your intent... You're supposed to have to, but... It does seem like the most consistent way to do it. And I just kind of haven't been doing it at all. in the middle of uh, watching Jojo Part 4. Hey, Darian, it's uh, it's the rat stand. That's what Cortex's gun is. He just turns everything into meat cubes. That makes this gun a little bit more disturbing, doesn't it? Yeah, that's way that's way more consistent. I should have thought of that a long time ago. It eats up a little more time than just jumping up directly, but it's way more consistent. I did the same thing again. That's all right. I don't need the bounce. Ate that for no reason. Totally unnecessary. 
Please hit. Okay, we're back at this part. They also added hints to uh, Crash Bandicoot in Japan. So it wasn't just Spyro. That's less of a, like, and the, I, I, the, the speed thing is like the big thing that would have killed it. I don't understand why they would have done that. Why they changed the speed or the camera. But uh, yeah, in Crash Bandicoot in Japan, every time you get an Aku Aku crate, it includes like a, like a hint for you. Weird addition, but it's not that harmful, I guess. It does seem like it would make the Japanese version like awful for speedrunning because you have to uh, you have to stop and listen to mask hints all the time. Those same kinds of mask hints were added as uh, like loading screen stuff in uh, Insane Trilogy. Bounce cycle. I want to avoid that. Somehow didn't eat a hit there. Not a tremendous bug cycle. Alright, back here again. Two masks. That is a good thing to have. One mask. Still okay. I'm cool with that. Uh, there's a dude over here. I remembered this time. Crate over there. Man! I went too far. I overshot it. That wasn't quite Mickey. That was a half Mickey. I didn't go full falsetto. Man, we, we got through the previous levels so fast. I, di I really didn't think we were going to spend a long time on this one. I thought the Cortex level was going to be free. Jump. Jump, Cortex. Jump. Check how long we've been at this after uh, after this run, this successful run, because I'm definitely going to get to the end and get the dev time relic on this attempt. was like 50 minutes after we got through the previous levels. Have we spent an hour and a half on just this level? There's no way. What happens? We were doing so good. I'm not thankfully I'm not getting caught on other lips. It's just that one like difficult one and we have a we have a solution for it. We just got to box this guy. Pull out our boxing gloves. Go to town. You know it'd be a good death battle. Dr. Eggman versus Dr. Cortex. Although maybe not because Eggman has been in a lot more games and probably done a lot more like impressive stuff. I think Eggman has a much higher success record 
with his uh, with his inventions than Cortex does. Why does he shoot into the foreground? I don't know why that happens sometimes. Great. Maybe all Cort- well, I was gonna say maybe all Cortex needs to do is mess with, like, uh, ancient magic beyond his understanding, but he was kind of always doing that, apparently, with the introduction of Uka Uka, which I'm still not crazy about. Said this before, I kind of like Cortex better when he was a solo man before Uka Uka was introduced. And retcon to be like, well, actually, this was the big bad all along. He was- Cortex was working for him. I would have liked Crash 3 better if he just, like, found Uka Uka at the start of that game. Instead of the retcon. Eggman versus Wily. That was a death battle, wasn't it? Wily's inventions are pretty boring, though. Like, they're all, they're all just robots, aren't they? Eggman's got a much more varied repertoire than Wily does. Like, Wily's got a castle. Wily's never had a space station. Like, I'm sorry, did Dr. Wily build three Death Stars? No, he didn't. Dr. Wily sucks compared to Eggman. Who won the death battle? Eggman, right? Gotta be. He's also got a much more intimidating, like, rival. Like, Sonic is almost... A, 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 I'm not gonna say a god, but he's... He, a, a, a threatening dude, when you think about it. As opposed to Wily fighting a repurposed, like, cleaning robot. Sorry to dis on... Sorry to uh, dis on Mega Man. I really shouldn't, like, even bother with that guy. It's faster to just jump past him. Waste of a mask. Totally unnecessary. Got my mask. Alright, this could be going worse. Got this dude over here. I don't know why that platform, because it's so dark, I always think it's part of the background. Wiley did not build a space station, but he sure screwed humanity over for millions of years. Millions of years? Okay, refresh my memory on the Mega Man timeline. There's Mega Man, and then Mega Man X is, like, some thousands of years in the future. And then Mega Man the 3D one, Legends, is after that, right? That's quite a time leap, millions of years. Millions of years. We'll have solved, like, all diseases in millions of years. We'll have achieved a godlike state of consciousness in millions of years. We will not be threatened by AI. We will be AI in millions of years. That's so far off. You can't just say millions of years.
I shouldn't have done that. Ah! Sorry. Okay. It, it, it's one of those things where it is probably technically the fastest option to just run past that guy. But it is going to be much safer and more consistent to, to block him. I don't understand that vine's hitbox. Maybe it comes out way later than it looks like it does. A little too high that time. <clears throat> how deep does the Star Wars iceberg go? How, how deep does the Watto iceberg go? Surely there are people who question the fact that Jedi mind tricks just did not work on him, right? He was a Sith Lord all along. He and Jar Jar were in it together. Actually, you know what? I could I could buy that. He owned Anakin as a slave. I could buy Watto as a Sith Lord. I don't even need to land on that. Okay. Good run. I can eat the nitros because I got a mask. Now jump up the ledge! One final ledge fuckery. Okay. Gotta be gold. Go. Gold and less than one second away from platinum. Okay, the ledge wouldn't have done it, but a couple little tiny steps further. I was so close to platinum on that one. At least it's over. Darth Vader literally came back to kill Watto personally. Yeah, I'd, I'd buy it. Dude was a slave owner. Of course he did. When uh, when was this? Was that uh, was that in the in the sequels, or was that in the original trilogy or in the sequels, or in the prequels? I guess. I haven't actually watched any Star Wars movies besides A New Hope. That's the only one I've seen. All right, what is this? This is a crash level, and then we've got a Dingo Dial level. All right. How many have we done? One, two, three, four, five, six. We've done six levels so far. Let's see if we can go eight. Let's see if we can close out the dinosaur world. In the comics, okay. 
we got to do a watch of the whole series at some point. Peak cinema. Is that, uh, is that sarcasm? I, I don't know. I didn't like episode four. That's supposed to be, like, the best one, right? That's why I didn't watch any of the others. Dino Dash. Okay, this is the one where we run from the T-Rex. This game's actually crashed a lot for me while I was doing the uh, off-stream platinum runs. It just kind of stops working. It just, it's a system unknown error occurred. Okay. Can I spin those? Flathead dinosaurs. How am I going to get that quickly? I guess in theory I would have to get the bottom one. Oh no, not the phase mask. I hate this one. Oh, this is going to suck. This is going to take forever. I got to phase out the mushrooms. That's right. It's a little slow, but it is faster than jumping on two boxes on top, at least. That's probably not worth going for. It's also not a very nice box to put down there. I don't like that box. That box irks me. No, it would be cool, a Sega Smash Brothers game. I don't think Sega has enough, like, characters people know and care about for that. We got the extent of their roster in, like, the All-Stars, the, the racing games. can't see far enough ahead for this. Get the box! Now, in theory, I don't need to worry about the time crates in this section, because, uh, the T-Rex should smash them. At least that's how it has worked in the past. This is the super pass. I don't know if it worked that way just yet. Why did I... Did I swing to the side by accident? I didn't see what happened. Oh, I'm invincible. Okay. Well, that's good for the TNT that I encountered. Whoop. Almost bit it.
I would get invincibility. Okay, so this is a level that I'm gonna want invincibility. Well, maybe not. Okay. This is a rail section with dinosaurs. It's kind of an artificial chase then. Here's where the mask might become relevant. If I still have yeah, invincibility would last till now. I feel like I'm making good time. waiting. How dare you make me wait. Oh, there's so many sections to this. There's so many dinosaurs. Well, it's one dinosaur, but there's so many dinosaur sections. John, slide! Man, I hope that didn't just ruin it. Okay, I'm still alive. I, despite the level's best efforts. I think he bit my pant. Alright, gotta be gold. I did good, okay. Less than three seconds away from platinum, too. That wasn't bad. That's gonna be one of the easier platinums from today's stream. Uh, who could do a Smash-type game? Uh, Sony has the most properties people would care about, I think. I guess Microsoft. They already have a couple of theirs in Smash, but... That's also getting to the point of, like, a lot of these aren't properties that they are known for or made. It's just properties that they bought at some point in time, like, like Minecraft. All right, ding a dial. What time is it? It's past six. I'm going to make this one the last one of the stream, however long it takes. Which would be eight levels. We would have 11 left to go. Hopefully two streams. I think we can get this done with... Uh... Some meaty streams. Sega fanboys would love it. Yeah, all, all 12 of them. Great. Saucy can finally play Ulala in uh, in fighting combat game. Uh, all right. Got to be another one of them shimmery things around here. I'm still in crash mode. I'm trying to spin to win. Oh boy. Oh, the, the flower blocked it. Okay. I hate this flower. This flower is time eater. I'm so glad he, like, continues to move at the same speed while floating as he does walking. That's real nice. Uh, I need a... I get a TNT crate, but I guess I have that, uh... Or a TNT barrel, but I guess I have that crate to use, at least. Okay, that time it blew up both. That was strange. I want to make sure this blows up everything if I hit this TNT. Again, I'm pretty sure it will, but, uh... I don't like assuming that something is going to work. Alright, so if I just bounce on that and leave, this will blow up everything, and I... Don't get the mask, though. Hmm. 
I, di I didn't know that. I didn't know if TNTs blew up mask crates, you don't get the masks. Uh, hmm. Is that mask going to be important is the question. Because I can't get invincibility on Dinga Dial levels. What happened? Oh, I get hit by acid. Okay, what Sega Genesis... Pro There's not a lot of... Sega didn't have a lot of games on the Genesis that were theirs. There were a lot of sports games, there were a lot of licensed games, but Sega games? What what Genesis-era properties do you imagine being in a... in a, like, Sega Smash Brothers type game? It's like Sonic, Rystar, Vector Man. Is that one Game Freak game? They own the, the rights to that. Altered Beast. Yeah, I guess there were a few, like, non platforming style games. There was, like, Altered Beast, there was uh, Golden Axe, Fantasy Star. Again, I don't know how many people necessarily played these games, even among Genesis owners, but. It's gonna be faster just do that because if I spin them then I get the mask and I immediately lose it anyway So it's a net zero Might be faster to suck those than to walk to them zone? I mean, that was a game that was on the Genesis. Just missed the suck. I wish I could figure out what I did to make them both blow up at the same time. I gotta figure out how to do that again. This might be a weird one to bring up. I think if we were to see another, you know, Smash Brothers style arena fighter, I think what I would most be interested in seeing would be uh, Disney Channel. I know, very weird thing to say. But, uh, I think more... Almost more... Well, Car uh, Cartoon Network has the most, uh... Cartoon Network and Disney Channel both have a lot of, uh... Properties. That are fitting for that kind of game. It's a shame that Punch Time Explosion, like... Sucks so much. I, I, I would... I think I would have liked a Cartoon Network fighter more than multiverses trying to do, like, everything all at once. Nickelodeon's properties are a little too, like, cartoony overall. For me to, like, really be invested in a game like that. But, uh, Toon Disney has a lot of, like, adventure-style shows. That I think would be cool in a, in a crossover game like that. Going is back to, like, uh, Kim Possible. And then the whole quote-unquote renaissance that followed after Gravity Falls that or star versus owl house amphibia bunch of stuff recently disney rejected the idea already yeah was it for the I, I wonder if it was just because they weren't interested or if it was because of the uh if it was for the my little pony reason that we don't like to see our characters fighting this is not what we're about
Okay, I did it again, but I forgot to hover. <sighs> now the question, do I just commit to it and hope that it's gonna, that's gonna proc? Because if I do that, then I'm on the other side and I've lost time. I actually made up a, a would-be roster for such a game recently. I think I posted it in a couple of the discords. I generally don't like really cartoony characters in games like that, but uh, if we if there were to be one in such a game, I feel like it would have to be Oscar Proud. I think Proud Families is, is worthy of like at least one rep. But, uh, it'd kind of be hard to make any other character work. Okay. There does seem to be an angle that I can consistently get it just right that it destroys both at one go. This might sound weird, I think Dingadile levels might be my favorite to uh, speedrun. It feels like the most similar to Crash 1. It's just nice, fluid, consistent platforming test. I didn't want the uh, Yakuza dude in, in Smash because of him hitting women. I, I assume that's like a big part of his uh, personality in game. I like how uh, I, I still have been meaning to do a stream of Jump Force with Jack, J just for fun, just to look at the game. Invisible Wall. But uh, I like how they handled uh, Sanji in that game, such that whenever he's fighting a female character, all of his attacks are the same, but their animations change to him, like, firing hearts at them. That's not something that, like, the Dragon Ball games ever really bother consider. How comfortable would Roshi be fighting a woman? He only ever really fights in Dragon Ball, and then it kind of doesn't really come up. He never fights any females in the, uh, in, like, the Dragon Ball tournaments. I'll bet by the Tournament of Power, he's like, well, these women are all Saiyans and aliens and they could kill me by breathing on me, so I feel okay with this. Why did I just... okay. That's probably worth eating a mask, doing that. Jump Force is delisted. Oh, wow, I did that badly. I do own it. I have it on Steam already. So that's not a problem, but, uh... Wow. It got DLC, didn't it? I guess I'm not going to be able to play the DLC. It would be nice if, in cases like that, they would, uh... Like, make the DLC free just to download. But I guess they just... They don't want anyone knowing the game exists, so... A little bit of time wasted there. Well, now we definitely got to stream it. What else have we got on the uh, on the anime roster? We've got enough games for another anime game night, but I like Jack to be over in person for that. It is kind of a, a thing that has been consistent with that particular series of streams. 
Also, they're they're mostly fighting games, so. There was one other I was thinking about doing. I can't remember what it was. We already did the JoJo one. Ice in theory. It'd take a lot of setup in my part, but we could do the... No, I, I always think this. I always think that, man, it'd be nice to, to stream the jump, like, Super and Ultra Stars games on the DS, because those are supposed to be good and Smash-like, but uh, they're on the DS, so you can't, like, do multiplayer. I wanted to do the uh, Bleach DS games with Jack, but uh, thus far I have not been able to successfully find a way to... Uh, like, emulate two DSs connecting to each other. Which is sad, because I like I like those games. I like the DS, the Bleach Dark Souls. Hey, I finally stream a Dark Souls game. I gotta, I gotta avoid that flower spit. If I'm gonna tank these nitros up here, or I why I'm I'm dumb I'm dingadal what am I doing? Okay, uh, hmm. I guess that'll do for this run. It just it just it it went gone it went bye bye. Now I'm used to Cortex. I'm used to being able to just walk under the spit because I'm short. I'm no longer short. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna commit and hope that I get both of them at once. Played a bit of it, didn't like it. Well, of course he didn't like it. Like we would be streaming it to make fun of it. We're not streaming it to see, hmm, is this a good game? Obviously it's not a good game. I know the cutscenes are, like, very broken and janky and T-posey, and that sounds fucking hilarious. You said Multiverses was trying to be everything at once. What did you mean by that? Like, all, all these eclectic, different, like, unrelated properties. Because it's everything Warner owns. It's movies, it's books, it's, it's TV shows, it's games. It's not like the Nick one where it's all Nickelodeon cartoons or Smash Brothers where it's all video games. It's just every piece of media from every... or every franchise from every possible piece of media is shoved together in one, you know, big experience. I think it kind of struggles to work because of that. And it has to try to unify all of these different franchises in a similar style. Kind of tries too hard to unify the music into, like, this kind of boring orchestral stuff. I got highlight videos of uh, both of our multiverses streams. My first time playing it with uh, Wickersham and then my second time playing it with Jack. And it was his first time playing it, so we got... Uh, Two first impressions highlights videos of uh, multiverses on the highlights channel. Pretty much summarizing our thoughts on the game. I did a uh, stream of the Nick game with uh, with Wickersham, not with Jack, but he did play it with me off stream, and he wasn't impressed by the Nick game. Right. Oh, it's changes to, to bandicoots halfway through. And we got a dino chase with no... No, we don't have a dino chase. Okay. I like this. Bounce all over the top? Yes, please. I'm 
got Iron Giant in the same game as Rick and Morty. In the same game as Gandalf from Lord of the Rings. In the same game as Arya Stark. This isn't necessarily a jab because even if it were a Cartoon Network game, they could, would still probably want to have Looney Tunes characters in it. I don't like extremely cartoony characters in games like this. Because they're all... Like, really cartoony characters are all kind of samey. They have the same powers. They're, they're, they're treated the same way. They're all they're super tough and elastic. They can pull objects from thin air. Because a lot of these old cartoon cartoons just all kind of just use the same tropes. And it's also just like gag manga stuff, so there's not... Uh, There's not, like, a consistent power level to draw from. I sound nerdy as shit when I say that. I know. But even Aureli in the Dragon Ball Tenkaichi games... She was a gag manga character, but... Uh, she she kind of fit in with how they, they handled her. They didn't have her doing, like, very blatantly fourth-wall-breaking, reality-defying shit. I th that that's just distracting to me. You can get away with one character like that at most. That's why I said the Oscar Proud thing. You get the Oscar pass. Any more than that? Nah, I'm 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 not on board anymore. Oh. You know what I'd really love that's absolutely never going to happen because no one else but me would care about it? Is a, a Romiko Takahashi crossover fighting game. Because I like most or all of her series. And they're all in some way or another suited for a, at least a few fighting game characters. It's uh, Urusei Atsura, Ranma 1 Half, Inuyasha. Not so much Meizo Koku, but uh, Rina is the last one. And I've seen, like, there, there's a mock-up image of a, of a Takahashi crossover fighting game. And it looks really cool. I'd love it. I'd play the shit out of that. Me and no one else. But man, would it be cool. There's not a lot of, like, uh, manga authors that have that number of successful series to draw from. You can't, you're kind of limited to, like, the, the jump crossover games. Which I would also be dare, very down for if we got, like, another good jump game like Jump Super and Ultimate Ultra Stars. Is it Ultra or Ultimate Star? I think it was Ultra Stars. I think that would be so cool to get another one of those that was just well made and uh, didn't try to be anything but a nice, well made anime Smash Brothers. That'd be great. I also have, like, uh, what, what, what what would be the next biggest anime license holder to have a crossover game? I actually don't know as far as uh, Japanese companies go. Because Viz's properties, I think they vary pretty heavily between... Uh, between Japan and the, and the West... In fact, Viz manga, like, serializes a lot of Shonen Jump series like Bleach and Naruto over here. Super Robot Wars is a cool uh, crossover series. I mean, if you, you have to be into, like, Japanese mech robot shows to really appreciate it, but... I know enough series that have been in that that uh, I'm a little disappointed we never got them over here. I know Code Geass has appeared in uh, Super Robot Wars. Big O, Gundam. I haven't watched Gundam, but everyone knows Gundam. I don't think Transformers have. <laughs> I 
I think Gigantor might have been in one of them, which is hilarious because Gigantor is old as shit and looks very dopey compared to most other super robots. I, I should have just gone for it. The series has enough characters in it. I'm even. I think crossover uh, crossover games within the same series are really cool. Hyrule Warriors is great. I love Hyrule Warriors. Namely, namely because with Zelda, there's so many different Zeldas that, and so many different like fun characters in that series, and so many of them never meet because they're in totally different like universes or timelines or whatever it is in Zelda. You could do something so- Fire Emblem is in a similar boat, and they had a Fire Emblem Warriors game. Castlevania could do something like that. You have unique dialogue between all the different era characters and everything. I think a Mario crossover game like that would be fun, but... A crossover. A Mario-style Warriors game would be fun, but uh, there's no shortage of games where, like, all the Mario characters are present and accounted for. Just like every Mario Party game. Here's the, here's the Bandicoot part. Sonic Smash game would be better. Uh, me personally, I, yeah, I think I'd be more interested in a, in a Sonic fighting game than I would in a Sega fighting game. Especially since a lot of Sega characters kind of just don't really lend themselves to fighting games. Which I know, weird thing to say considering some of the weird characters that are in Smash Brothers. They can make it work, but like, how, how is, are you going to put Super Monkey Ball in a fighting game, for example? That's a big challenge. Here we have Mobius Warriors. That's a, that was a mean place to put a mask. I don't think it refreshed. They don't refresh! Ah, oh, that's lame! They put three masks in such a close proximity <sighs> that I can't get I can't get invincibility again unless I like wait a couple seconds. Now the question is, would I save time by waiting those couple seconds? Also, this is a long one. Unfortunately, a lot of Sonic characters are kind of pretty one-note, though. It'd be nice to see them, like, try to flesh them out, but... How far are they going to get? <laughs> Big and Froggy are the uh, Rosalina and Luma. He's a puppet character. Fro Froggy's the puppet. Hales kind of fundamentally changes how he plays between ever... Like, every game he's in. 
a lot of the early games, he's just Sonic, but worse and able to fly. Sonic Adventure 2, he had the uh, mech that he used. Sonic Battle was the one that uh, I guess would be the best representative of how he might work in a fighting game. He used a bunch of, like, uh, gadgets that he would pull out. I remember how he played in Sonic the Fighters. And he just was a character who did, like, tail swipes and generic things like that. He's moving now. Is that, uh, is that Crash game out yet? The party game? Or whatever it is? It's like, uh, Crash Splatoon or something, right? doing their own Splatoon. Is that Sony? Yeah, I think it was Sony at their state of play. They announced what is very clearly a Splatoon like knockoff. But with realistically proportioned characters and uh, foam? Weird looking game, that. I'm not going to get invincibility again. Ah, I lost my other mask. That's bad. My finger's slipping too. Okay, end of level. Don't hit a nitro now. Oh my god, that'd be awful. 201. Wow, that's the biggest one yet, I think. 15 sec, Almost 20 seconds off of Platinum. Alright, that's gonna take some time off stream, I see. It's not free, is it? You have to buy that, uh, you have to buy that Crash game, the party game for Arena Fighter or whatever it is. I'm slightly curious, but not curious enough to, uh, like, pay for it. Sorry. Okay. So that was eight levels. We have 11 left. Depending on how bad these get. Crash, Crash Landed had, it has, like, a polar bear type section, too. Oh, I remember that. Depending on how bad these get... We could get this done in two more streams. I might maybe next stream I could do like a, a big five, six hour, just knock out a bunch of these levels. I think if I really sit down and focus on this, we could we could get it done a lot sooner than uh, we can get more than four four levels per stream done. This was a good batch. We got eight done. That's gonna be it for today. Uh, we'll be back tentatively tomorrow with Jack and Darian to finish off the Zelda Ocarina Majora Combination Randomizer. Then after that, I will be starting the Skyward Marathon on Monday. So, a lot of streaming coming up. Thank you guys for hanging out today, and I'll hopefully see you tomorrow. <laughs>